Beach Ballet Center for about 55 years. She's a world-renowned legacy in the dance world. And she was my dance teacher and dance mentor since I was six or seven years old until I graduated high school. I danced for free there my entire life. Um, she had a wonderful scholarship. She believed in me. She made me one of her star ballet dancers. But in um, 2013, I saw on Facebook that the Palm Beach Ballet Center is closing its doors. And I just started to cry. I, I was just devastated that my second home was shut down and you know, that Miss Joan has Alzheimer's. She was in a ward room. I mean, this was an end stage facility. And she was pretty much just warehouse there. She was in the bed by herself. She had no advocate, no real visitors, and no one. But she still remembered who I was. I could not live with her situation. <laughs> so I took over power of attorney. I quit my job. And I moved her into my house. I had no idea. I had no background everyone thought I was crazy. My parents thought I was ru ruining my life by taking her in. They're like, oh, you're 29 years old. You're ruining your personal life. You're ruining your career. And I was just, I wasn't going to hear it from anyone. I was so committed to doing what was right to the woman who I felt did right by me while I grew up. She was like a second mother to me. She was like a grandmother to me. She was family. Sometimes our family is the family we choose. So this has been a huge process. I moved her into the house. I had um, no help, and I didn't know anything about services. I knew nothing about the systems. All I knew is that I was gonna figure it out. I forget who Miss Joan was, because I'm now living with who Miss Joan is now. I get caught up in just taking care of her and having her in my home. She was tough. Her standard was perfection. Her standard was you better show up and give your best. And it wasn't about being perfect as much as it was showing up and taking it seriously. She's still a teacher. She's taught me love. She's taught me the power of the present moment. She's taught me forgiveness. She's taught me how to be a better human being as a lawyer, as a friend, from being a child as a ballet dancer, to an adult with work ethic, to a human being that has empathy and compassion. She's still teaching those things. <laughs> Cheers. She made me me, she's a part of me, and she deserved a better ending than this. Period, end of story. Please join me in welcoming Miss Carissa Krenz. Sometimes you take a step back and watch six minutes wrapped up uh, six years and it makes you, it makes me emotional when I normally go through the day to day not really taking a step back, um, remembering the journey. So sometimes it's nice to take a step back and see six years summarized into some nice moments. But as many of you know here, and you're here for a reason, that this disease is tough. It's tough on our loved ones, and it's tough on us caregivers, because we as caregivers are aware of what's happening. We are aware of the disease declining and we tend to want to shoulder the burden of trying to fix everything. I'm honored to be speaking here today for a couple of reasons. First, Alzheimer's Community Care 
truly saved Miss Joan's life and mine. But also another special reason is that Miss Joan and the Palm Beach Ballet Center performed here for more than a decade for the International Society of Palm Beach, Mrs. Erme Wyman Miro, who's also our chair today. So talk about coming full circle. It's a special day to be here. When you realize there is help and you're not alone, a huge burden is lifted. And while there's no cure for Alzheimer's disease at this time, Alzheimer's community care helps patients cope and caregivers survive as the disease continues to decline. For those of you who don't know, the specialized day centers are focused on making the present moment for both of us as dignified and decent as possible. I have to say, and you heard it from the speech before, that the organization is just as much here for me as a caregiver as it is for the patient, Ms. Joan. And for that, I am forever grateful. Here's an example. About five years ago, I was drowning as a caregiver, building my own injury law firm, and I was so overwhelmed with what I had to do in front of me to just get the job done that I didn't know where to begin to seek out services. It just wasn't on my radar on how to begin to do that. After the Palm Beach Post ran a rather large article in 2015, I was flooded with phone calls of people that wanted to cry or come over and hug her, but that didn't exactly help me find better balance or take care of Miss Joan. It just drowned me more. In fact, I was so busy that when Mary Barnes called the president of Alzheimer's Community Care, I missed her call and I didn't even call her back. She called a few times. Um, but true to the organization's mission, Mary showed up with her team of angels at my apartment, armed to do an assessment to get Joan into daycare immediately within the next weeks with transportation included. It wasn't until I actually had a breather that I understood how underwater I truly was. As ironic as it sounds, I was the one doing the rescuing, but I needed just as much rescuing myself. And I remember my phone was going off and Mary was sitting there and she's like, Carissa, we're trying to help you. And I was like, but I don't know, like I didn't even have time to be helped. I was that busy. But I was committed to the process, just like Alzheimer's Community Care was and has been. Alzheimer's Community Care has truly helped us sustain a better quality of life and made the caregiving experience sustainable for into six years and still counting. So now about Miss Joan. She has over 60 years of archives in the Palm Beach Post. If you Google her name, a whole lot comes up. It was one of the top 10 dance schools in the country. Those who knew Miss Joan during the days at the Palm Beach Ballet Center know of the countless nights she slept at the studio, the thousands of costumes she sewed, and the endless professional production she put on for the community for free and for love. Also for nursing homes, also for events like Alzheimer's, she did it all. But sadly, after more than a half century of excellence and after being honored by the mayor and being the oldest business in Lake Park, the woman behind it all fell ill to Alzheimer's disease and the Palm Beach Ballet Center closed its doors. As Miss Jones' memory began to fail her, the studio was stolen from her. Her home was foreclosed and taken by the bank. All of her animals, when she was an animal lover, were confiscated by animal control. And she was warehoused in a very depressing nursing home facility that was like a prison. The woman who perfected the art of movement was encouraged to stay in bed and waste away in a ward room with five beds. She was robbed of her dignity and even her name. The nursing home staff called her Emily 
anyone that knew Joan never knew that her legal name was Emily Joan Miller. She was Joan, and she was more confused than she needed to be having to respond to Emily. She went from being a somebody in this community, we're all a somebody, but she was a somebody in this community to being a bed count while she was in the beginning stages of Alzheimer's and still very mobile and lively and able to teach or help correct in a ballet class. She was literally robbed of her life and her dignity years before the disease progressed and she was simply not suitably placed. So you may ask, how did this happen to such a distinguished woman in the community with such a large legacy? Why did she become a victim of the system? Unfortunately, Ms. Joan had no advocate and no next of kin. She dedicated her entire life to this community. She never got married. She never had kids. She was an only child and her parents had passed, including her father who died in 2004 at 94 years old of Alzheimer's disease, which she took care of him until the very end, but she had no one to do the same for her. In reality, the community was her family and her students, like myself, were her children. That's when I decided that I couldn't live with her situation and that I was gonna make it my responsibility to make sure that she was okay. See, you never know when you're gonna feel emotional. <laughs> she paid it forward by giving me free ballet class my entire life. She believed in me. And she enriched the community with free performances for more than 55 years. Her generous heart, and mind you, this was a time where women didn't own businesses. She was a remarkable woman. She had herself together. She ran the studio, she ran the business, she ran the family, she ran the parents, she ran the kids, she ran the rehearsals, she ran the productions, she ran the music. She did it all. She called every shot until she lost her mind. Her generous heart and selfless dedication to bettering the arts and the community deserved a more dignified exit in this community. It just did. We all deserve a dignified exit. But hers, for some reason, when the studio closed its doors, people thought, you know what? She can't teach anymore. Her purpose is done. But it just wasn't done. And it's not done because Alzheimer's is a purpose now too. So that's when I decided it was my time and Mary decided it was our time to pay it back. That's when I took over power of attorney, quit my six figure law job at Greenberg Traurig, opened my own law firm and moved her into my house. And I did everything for about a year with no help until Mary found me. It is because of Alzheimer's community care, however, that I've been able to keep her in the community, in the home, thriving for six years for a disease that is constantly declining. She actually got better in the nurse, after she got out of the nursing home before. Now we are where we are, but she did, we went from down to up to down. Alzheimer's community care staff, I'm very grateful for because they watch her, they feed her, they give her medications, they keep her stimulated, and she has somewhere to go daily where she is safe and loved and called Joan, which is important. Simply put, without daycare and transportation, I could not have done it. She would not still be in the community. She probably still wouldn't be alive today because we have had many scares, which the day center has helped me prevent because of them calling, it's a system of checks and balances and it really requires great teamwork to accomplish what we've accomplished to keep Joan Miller in the community and safe. So Miss Joan may not remember her profound contribution to the arts in the community. She may not even remember her legacy and she often forgets my name. But you know what she does remember? She remembers how I make her feel and how daycare makes her feel daily. 
and that is loved. Thousands of students and families and dance masters around the world will never forget Miss Joan Miller. Without a doubt, her legacy precedes her. And also, for that, this unforgettable legend is here today. And when I told her she was here and she was gonna get to take a curtsy in front of Mrs. Dwyer and Miro, she said, honest to God? <laughs> so she thinks we have a performance. <laughs> and I'm going to ask my mom, who helps take care of things, Tally, who's amazing at the Day Center, has been with her for many years now, and Carol, also one of our caregivers who lives with us, to bring Joan up here for a curtsy. She looks good, that's what I heard, right? Yeah. It's amazing what teamwork can do when a community effort 